Hello, and you're here with data science teacher Brandon, and we're going to learn how to make the anomaly plot detection, anomaly detection plot in C1. Okay. So we're actually going to use many plots to make this. We're going to combine a few different plots, so you'll have a lot of flexibility in how you make your own anomaly detection plot. Okay. So starting off by importing the standard visualization libraries, pandas we'll use to work with the data, Seaborn. Uh, Make the main plot and then plt uh, pi plot to add some formatting and make sure we're looking at and stuff like that too. And a very simple plot as well. Okay. So we're importing the data from my GitHub reservoir and we're using the Google stock price, which stocks move quite a bit. So it's good to know if they're moving a lot if you're a portfolio manager. Okay. So just looking at the closing price. We see it's a very exponential distribution. So we'll need to do something to make this stationary. Pretty financial related. Something you always have to do when you're dealing with financial data is it's usually not stationary. And it's hard to predict something that is just constantly moving up. Okay, so how can you learn what the next value is going to be if it's just headed off into a new direction and never repeats? There's no learning that can happen. So what we do is we do the percentage change of this value. Okay, so if I do the percentage change, and I'm going to set the index here as well to be the date time. So you just a true daytime value, so you can see here, and then a plot some C1. Okay, so I make that line plot right there. You can see here now we have a stationary data set. We can really see when it moves up or when it moves down, and this is what we'll look for our anomaly detection. We'll see if the percentage change is above or below a certain threshold. Okay, so just creating a palette that I'll work with later on in my plot, and just standard, nothing fancy. Okay, so here we're doing. Big comma axis equals to sub plus. This is making the background, and we'll use this quite a few times. So this is making our first step. So then we put the line plot in that, and the big thing here is we're going to go axis equals axis, ax equals ax, and that will assign the seaborne plot into this axis object. And this is really one of the main reasons we're doing this today is to have access to this axis object, which is really this. I, I kind of think of it like this square where you put the plot into, or this position where you put the plot into. And the figure is the background plot, but we won't be using that today. Okay, so we have our axis. We're doing our line plot again. We're then going to extract the standard deviation and the mean from the percentage change. Okay, and we're going to create an upper and lower limit. We'll use this a few times. It's kind of handy to have this available a couple times. So we'll create an upper and lower limit, and we're going to do plt dot ax h line, and you can do ax v, and that'll do a vertical line. Ax h does a horizontal line exactly like it sounds, axis, horizontal line, and here you can see we have the line plotting the two, really the boundary of where the anomalies occur. Okay, so This is good, but we can do a little bit more to highlight this. Uh, I just wanted to say, I was playing around with uh, plt.style. or the available style plots. You can choose different kind of backgrounds, different things to work with. It can be really kind of fun. If you've gotten bored of the standard Seaborn uh, plotting, which Seaborn is very beautiful and looks very nice, but after years of it, it kind of gets boring. So this is just a way to kind of keep it fresh and kind of make something new. So I'm going to use the BHM style plot. So plt.style.use, and this will take effect for the rest of my my session. So this workbook will, while, this for, while the memory isn't cleared, it will be taking effect. So taking those two. We're going to create those upper limits, create those those lines, and then what I'm going to do on top of this, I'm going to add a scatter plot. So on top of my line plot, uh, next to the lines that I've created, I'm going to create a scatter plot to really highlight when and to see, to really showcase when it's these are outliers. So it's not just a line above, it's kind of a little bit more detailed to it. So what we're going to do though is we're going to do logical indexing and select when it's above. The upper limit and when it's or and that's the absolute symbol or if it's lower than the lower limits okay, so that's one so i'm doing the logical indexing from my pandas data frame then what i'm going to do is select the closing column just like i did up here with df so i just put the logical indexing in that first set of square brackets and then select the column after i did that and this is just going to be these values right here, but it's going to be on it's going to be the index values as well, so it'll stay in the same order. Okay, then we're going to do 
And this is another reason we have the AX objects that we can then put this plot on top of the first one. And so this is how we're going to create two plots together. I'm going to change the size of my scatters scatter plot to be 100 just to make them a little bit stand out a little bit more. I'm going to add a title. And what I do here is I do line break, which is the slash N, and I do that before and after. Just create a little space before and after to kind of be nice. A little bit nicer. I'm going to do the same thing with the date at the bottom. Before and after and font like bold just to make it like a title. And we get a nice plot. We can, this is very good, I think, the way it is. We can go a little bit more and highlight the two different uh, anomalies. If they're really good, green maybe, and if they're really bad, let's do red. So all we do here, because we have this axis object, we can do our scatter plot right here. And then in the next one, so this is our original, but notice here we're only doing one. We're not, we don't have two logic statements, we only have one. So one for the lower limit. Okay, and I'm going to set it one color and then one for the upper limit. So only selecting the ones that are the upper limit, above the upper limit, and then I'll plot those a certain color too. So between the two different color palettes that I have up above. And then everything's the same. And you can see here now we get, you know, when it's good, we have a lighter color, a nice blue green color. And then when it's red and bad and not a good movement, we have uh, a darker red. Okay, so it looks quite nice. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you next time.